I'm painting the fuchsias from my courtyard for today's Found and Pen Ink journal and most of it's being done with Found and Pen Inks. I'm also using a Kalinsky Sable watercolorist brush as well as my Found and Pens. I'm using the Pilot water soluble inks, beautiful inks from Japan uh, for the painting of the fuchsias and I'm using the Atramentous document ink, a permanent black ink for the writing. Now my handwriting used to be atrocious. It's not great now. But when I switched from using ballpoint pens to a good quality fountain pen, and you may need to go to a pen shop or a pen fair and, you know, try out different pens to find one that suits your writing style. But if you struggle to write well as I did, you may find changing to a fountain pen greatly improves your work. It certainly helped me. Um, you also need to perhaps learn what nib to use for your type of handwriting. For instance, I tend to write fairly quickly. I'm an impatient sort of person and um, I also, I paint quickly, you know, and uh, not speed painting. I mean, I can take 10 hours on a painting. It just, you know, the brush strokes, you know, go down reasonably fast. And uh, so my writing, I get ahead of myself. That was a lot of why my writing was bad because getting ahead of myself, um, being <laughs> dyslectic, um, our minds race ahead. I I would maybe jump a letter or, you know, I still make mistakes. The first letter I, word I wrote, fuchsia, I left a letter out because I was rushing ahead and yet I know how to spell it. So these things can frustrate us a bit. So we, it's up, it helps if we slow down and it also helps if we get the right type of pen for our speed of handwriting. Because I write fast, I write better with a medium nib than I do with a fine nib. A fine nib can tend to be scratchy for me. I don't give the pen long enough to let the ink flow out of that nib. And so I get a scrawl. But if I have a nice generous nib and a generous flowing ink, like the pile of inks, and I will find that that will keep up with my writing and I get a better looking handwriting. So there's a great deal that you can learn about fountain pens and fountain pen inks and journaling. I am not an expert. I have only been back into fountain pen work in the last two years. Now, I, certainly I use them every day and I'm practicing with them, but there are a lot better experts on YouTube. Some of the um, Goulet pens, some of the Pen shops, you know, they are the ones to have a look at if you're really wanting to learn about the fountain pens. And as I said, go to a good quality pen shop if you can, where they might allow you to try them out. They're having group meetings now in capital cities where you can go perhaps to a pen fair and you, people are generous and will let you actually try out a pen. There are even places where you can actually hire a quality fountain pen for two weeks for a small fee rather than investing all your money in an expensive pen. The first couple of fountain pens I got were a load of rubbish <laughs> um, from a um, social media platform advertisement and uh, unfortunately I joined a fountain pen group at that particular point because I'd wasted my money on these dreadful pens and uh, they gave me some good advice and I followed their advice and uh, purchased uh, the best pen I could get within my budget at that time and since then I've gradually acquired um, Buying secondhand from people I can trust mostly or sales, I very rarely had paid full price because I, I try to work within a budget. So this is how I have built my fan and pen collection. A lot of my pens are vintage pens uh, which have been sold in neglected state and I have learned how to clean them and uh, do a little bit of personal repairs on them and that's allowed me to get some pens worth hundreds of dollars for a reasonable price that I could afford. So they're just a few of my tips in acquiring my materials. Also with your inks, you don't have to buy a full 35 mil bottle of ink. You can buy, you know, a two mil or a five mil sample and that's a good way to discover your inks. Or as I said, go online to one of the fountain pen groups and uh, describe what you're after. Do you want a very wet ink that flows rapidly from the pen? Do you want a dry ink 
what sort of colour you ask after. Ask people for recommendations. Tell them the type of pen and nib you have. And it, people are very helpful. And that's how I'm learning. Plus, of course, by practising. So enjoy my demonstration. And think of any questions and put them in the comments. And I will try to answer them either in the comments or in the next video. I can demonstrate things to help you. So let me know what you want to know more about or what you would like me to demonstrate after watching this one and I'll also give you some more tips at the end.
One of the reasons I like buying and restoring vintage fountain pens is I feel like they're my old high school friends. Most of the vintage ones that I buy date back to the days of my high school years. We were allowed to use fountain pens in high school. It was a great privilege after using a dip pen right through primary school. Now the inks that I have used as the Erosh Izuku Pilot Ink and the 35ml bottle is beautiful. It's a real classic bottle. It's heavyweight. It also comes in a smaller bottle that you can often get with three different colours in as a gift set. And as I said, most ink suppliers will sell you either two or five mil samples if you want to try out inks before you invest in the larger bottles. But uh, I love the classic bottle. And for me, uh, the 35 mil bottle isn't a huge investment. I know I'm going to use it because I'm doing journaling every day. Now, if you're wanting to have that ink that won't bleed when you put the watercolour or the ink wash over it with water, then go for the Atramentus ink is the one that I recommend. With It's a document ink. There are other permanent inks. Uh, make sure you get the document ink. They do have other ones that are water soluble. So you're looking for the Atramentus document ink. This one is turquoise now. I found the turquoise bled when I put it onto the cartridge paper, but the blacks, the document black didn't. So even in the same brand, your inks can behave differently. So you need to practice, you need to experiment, you need to ask advice. If you want to find out things beforehand, the best thing to do is to join a good fan of group and sit and read the, the post. Don't waste everybody's time by asking endless questions. Go into search and find out if that question's already been answered. You'll be respected a lot more if you don't waste busy people's time. And it's just so much to learn from people who've been using this material. Now, the colour harmony, let's talk colour harmony. Now, for these um, fuchsia, I used a close to split opposite colour harmony. The fuchsias dictated the colours that I used. I used a red violet to a blue violet. I'll line that up a little bit here. Um, whoops, a daisy. We get, um, okay, red violet and blue violet up here. And the opposite is yellow. And it wouldn't have worked if I had done red, violet, blue, violet and tried to paint the leaves yellow. Certainly I could have gone up into olive greens, uh, which would still have been close to the yellow. But I wanted to extend it further out. So I basically did a, a close to split opposite. So I did red, violet, blue, violet and came across to the green to yellow green. So I extended out with a little bit more colour than I would with just a true cross split opposite. So don't use any more colours than that uh, or you'd have a hodgepodge. As I said, could you imagine trying to paint a bright sunflower in the background of this, um, you know, yellow-orange in the background of this lovely fuchsia? Red, violet, blue, violet would have worked well with the yellow, but not with, say, the orange added or a red. You've just got to try to control your colour and not try to use too many colours. The most colours I put in a painting is five or seven sometimes if I use a lot of muted colours in that grouping. But uh, I tend to find if I'm going to get into trouble with the painting, it'll be by putting too much colour in because I love colour and I can get carried away. So when I plan a painting, I try to keep to my colour harmony.